anybody else, you know, but we want someone who has a bit of an idea. <laughs> so at the end of it, I ended up, I ended up doing it, and it took ages in, in the old East German sure. studios in the Brunnenstrasse. Yeah, what year are we speaking of here? Eighty-nine. Yeah. This is like this is like between the between Jack, Jack, July, June like eighty-nine and uh, December of eighty-nine because it went on the production of this record because we had to work shifts. Yeah. Sure. We could, like do like. Sometimes three hour shifts, sometimes four hour shifts, sometimes eight hour shifts, sometimes 14 hour shifts. It was always, it depended on who else was in the studio. Right. We had these like steam driven mixing desks with like Frankenstein style like switches and stuff. It was a very, very strange place. Um, and I had a visa, visa to come to East, East Berlin and East Germany however and whenever I wanted. I didn't have to change money every time I came over to work for me smuggle lots of things in and out, you know. <laughs> sure, sure. Uh, which was a great help. And um, I made this LP, you know, and like after this, I got in, obviously working on this album, I met quite a lot of people from this sure. Amiga, yeah? and um, I managed to con them, con managed to talk them into, uh, after the wall came down and everything, to make their own kind of dance music, East German dance music. I thought, you know, that might be quite interesting. Sure. Like, who really wants to listen to rock music anymore? You know, this is 1990, you know. Mm -hmm. Transition of, like, things have happened. And, you know, there's no East Germany. I don't know, I just, like, blab my way. And they said, well, yeah, we'll do it. We'll do it. And so they made the first 12-inch records that they... The only thing that had been available prior to that was the Soviet national anthem on 12-inch. <laughs> and they didn't know what a 12-inch single was. Mm -hmm. And... Um, Mm. I, 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 they tried it. They brought out a series of the worst records you've ever fucking seen. I mean, it's just yeah. that really bad. Yeah. yeah, like Electric Beat Crew. Uh huh. This is like you're talking about 1989 here, when like kind of like tepid hip hop, mm -hmm. rap, stroke, break dance records were like, you know, like you didn't need it. Nobody needed it. And I said, well, this, is, this, is what, this is not what I meant by a dance record. I mean, like, real dance sure. music, you know. Sure. Techno. I've never heard of it, didn't know what I was talking yeah. about. And so I said, well, look, I'll give you a cassette, listen to it, and you tell me if you like. And they went, well, you do it, you do it. And I'm going, oh, right. okay, well, I'll do it. And I'll give you a cassette of the things that I think are good. And, and I thought, well, you know, I'll give yeah. you a cassette of things, that, some of the things, three or four things that I think are really good, and the rest is complete rubbish so that they'll choose the really good things and the rubbish will be left up. and you know what they chose the rubbish they chose the rubbish <laughs> and so I ended up like releasing the first three records that I released were like real rubbish right and two of them were, really, were the ones that I really wanted to release still retain those artists to, to, today mm. in um, 1994 uh, uh, <laughs> uh, that's Vuv and Effective Force mm. and the rest of them like, discarded it it's yeah. complete rubbish and uh, we worked for from 1991 I managed to start the label finally with all the all problems and finding office space because they wouldn't give me any because mm. they didn't treat it as a serious business really what I was trying to set up mm -hmm. and at the it, it was in the old uh, Reichstag's Präsidentenpalais which was mm. Uh, just behind the Reichstag. In fact, it's the place where there was a, a tunnel leading from this building to the Reichstag. And really? This was the tunnel which, like, the Nazis used to burn down mm -hmm. the Reichstag in 1933. Interesting. Next to the cutting rooms there. It's all marble staircases and pillars. Yeah. And um, they had their offices in there, which they, they'd had since 1948 or so, or 47, in fact was where the Amiga was situated, the old, the, the state-owned record label mm -hmm. was situated, with the classical and the, the literary records and, uh, you know, birds of the DDR records. Yeah, and, sure. and, um, and I just like, said, okay, well, you know, yeah. I'll start it, and, the, and it not? just went from there. And we were actually, when, when the DSB, as it became, Deutsche Schallplatten building, uh, it, when it closed down in 1993, MFS was the only label on in, in the in the company which had actually made a profit. We don't, you know, we'd actually had a, a turnover of almost a million marks. We were like five hundred marks short. Fantastic. Marks, yeah. Fantastic. And um, 
I was quite reluctant to, that, you know, really to, to go because I thought it was about a rather sad situation sure. and they didn't really, they didn't treat me seriously. Yet in the end, I'm the only thing that's come out of it, right. really, you know. And I decided to, we asked our artists, what do you want us to do? Do you want us to pack it in? Or do you want us to carry on? If you want us to carry on, then we've got to have your 100% support. Yeah. And they were, well, we'd like you to carry on. Of course, it'd be stupid not to, wouldn't it? Yeah. And so we ended up finding a new office, which is the beautiful Lodge sure. Dam 19. Sure. Right sure. In the west part, yeah. literally yeah. 10 meters into the west. Yeah. And um, that's it now. That's the yeah. sort of second phase. And so we'll see Fantastic. what goes on from there. Now my like your battery's running it, It's going to be running out very soon but uh, it's actually the tape is going to be running out. Okay. So I would like to ask one more quick question. I uh, hope the subject is not taboo. Um, it, no comparison between the two books, but I did also read Zoo Station. Yeah. And what, I, I remember when I told you, you told me a, a unbelievable story about the fate of Ian Walker, the author. Yeah, yeah, he, he committed suicide, yeah. Didn't he? He, he, thought, he thought he was, he, he had been having a rather, rather bad time and he, um, he jumped off a building Claim, and he'd been claiming he'd seen the light. He'd been talked to by God, and that he was the second coming of Christ. My gosh. And when the police came, he said he, he, he was being followed by the Patrice secret police, and they came to collect him. And what happened was he was standing on top of his building, and the police came to get him. You know, oh my God, the guy who jumped off the building. Right. And he said the Patrice police have come to get me, and he threw himself off this building, and killed himself. Gosh. Um, my friend Alistair, who. He used to have a, yeah, he, he's he in the book. Me, he's he, in the book, yeah, right? Yeah. He was his kind of mentor. Well, Alistair used to live here. I used to play the group with Alistair. Right, open, open for New Order. Vegas, yeah. Open for New Order. Yeah, yeah that's, that's right. Funny. And he he saw him about a couple of days before he died. Yeah. It was a very very sad. I mean, I was never friendly with Ian. Sure. Ian was a very was a very strange person. And but Alistair knew him. You'd have to ask Alistair the complete and utter sure hundred percent details on it. Alistair's actually in Berlin at the present moment. <laughs> Uh, he's asleep on my floor at home. Um, yeah. for, for his first visit since 1988. Yeah. Uh, I think, like, for, for Alistair, it's like it, was, it was a bit kind of like, you know, dramatic. Sure. Sure. You know? Listen, my tape is about to run out here, but again, uh, I think you've established a, a fascinating and interesting life for yourself here in Berlin, and uh, reading about your, your exploits in... live my life, you didn't know that that's not really true. <laughs> And reading about your exploits in the books and everything, and, and then meeting you and having you be so kind to me was really. Uh, well, as long uh, as you don't use this as evidence against you. No, no, I certainly won't, and I'll I'll do my purely for your personal enjoyment. Yes, and 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 for some some of the others who have read the book, like yes, my brother, my brother, for example. But your brother isn't a liar. <laughs> no, no, not at all. But uh, but thank you very very much, Mark, and um, thank you for uh, you know taking the time to to talk to me in the Penguin Club and for drawing the little maps. And for the taking the time out of your schedule today to, to you know walk over yeah, here yes, and yes. Uh, I'm going to build it later. It's like four o'clock now. Yeah. yeah, but in any case, thank you very much, and it's I'll uh, I'll uh, I enjoy it. It's like fun. Yeah, thank thank you very. much.